So, uh, success. All the rage. To be honest, when it comes to all this motor and battery cell count hype, I'm not completely convinced that all of this isn't just a way to sell us more crap. It seems like all this push and all the hypey motors are always being pushed by the sponsored pilots. Yeah, they're definitely getting my dollars over it. I built my first 6S rig last night. It was actually a pain in the butt. Not anything that has to do with 6S, just had a bad flight controller, ran into just random issues. I had a 4-in-1 ESC that's just not wanting to cooperate before I even ever gave it 22 volts. So this is what I've got here. So a Hyperlite Floss 2, a 2207, 2500, and 22 kV motors. It's not completely identical. It is a different flight controller, same ESC, set up the exact same way. I've got this, and uh, this is my new 6S build. Hyperlite Floss 2 with the 2207, 1722 kV motors. I haven't been able to find any uh, 1050 6S packs yet, so this is a 1300 6S pack, which is just freaking massive. I wanna do some testing. So, you guys might not realize this now, but I used to run a lot. I used to be as into running as I am into quads. When I was really into running, I realized that calorie consumption had more to do with distance and weight than it did time. And all the success stuff I've seen online so far is like, hey, check it out, I'm gonna fly this quad around for uh, 90 seconds on 6S and I'll fly another quad around for 90 seconds on 4S and we'll see what uses the most ma. Unless they're going the exact same distance, that's not really a good way to judge judge what is actually going on. Now, just like in running, if you get your heart rate elevated to a certain level, yeah, you're gonna burn more because of where your heart rate's at. But at the same time, like you can get into kind of some grooves where you become more efficient. So that, that applies in running. I think that's gonna apply in quads too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out. It's beautiful today. It's February 16th, 17th. It's, it's February something and it is 68 degrees right now here in my hometown of Missouri. And I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna set up a track. On that track, I'm gonna spend, you know, a battery each getting used to the track and then I'm gonna fly a battery of a set number of laps on said track and then I'm gonna see which quad used the most ma. I did do some modifications here so the quads would weigh the exact same amount. So I've got some extra ma uh, attached to the top of this quad. If I do this, let's stick the 6S quad on the scale, all up with the batteries coming in at 536, 537 grams. So let's tear it, which zeroes it out. So if I take it off, we're back up to 536. My other quad also showing a zero. So we are identical weights, same props, essentially the same motors. These are the old school style. I'm not gonna buy some pantless versions of these just to show you guys what to do. Yeah, so let's go set up a track and see what it does. Here we go. All right, so it's pretty windy, so I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I've got about half of the regional qualifier track set up. I'm excited. This is actually the maiden for the 6S build, so uh, hopefully it goes all right. <laughs> Doesn't catch on fire. Let's get a battery on and uh, let her rip. Here we go. Pretty fun. So I got a fresh battery on this. I've got my track kind of defined. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run five laps. Hopefully I can count. I'm gonna try to have the most consistent line possible. So I'm probably not gonna be power looping the power loop gates. But I'm gonna run five laps and then immediately land. We'll charge it and we'll see how much ma we had to put back in. So uh, let's see how it do. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this DVR play. I'll tell you the truth, the results from the testing were pretty disappointing. The first go around that we're watching right here, I did have a mess up on the 6S rig on this first lap. Um, 
with the 4S rig, I tried to kind of emulate that mess up in the second lap. You'll kind of see that uh, both of these quads ended up coming in within six seconds of one another. Pretty much on all the flying I did when I compared the DVRs, I flew the 4S rig better. The 4S rig did not fly better. The 6S rig, I don't know what it is. They have both have the exact same tune. They have my 4S tune on them. I didn't, you know, mess with tuning the 6S rig. I just put my normal 4S tune on it and it did. The flight controller seemed like it really handled everything very, very well. And I don't, I don't know if that's related to the higher voltage or not, but it was exceptional and notable that the 6S setup did fly substantially better. I definitely want to do this kind of test again, but for the time being, essentially the way this first run came in was that the 6S rig ended up being about 10% more efficient than the 4S rig. However, I attempted to do the test again two other ways. This was the third way I did it, and uh, this I did 11 just circle laps. And for whatever reason, uh, the 4S, I just, I flew so much more aggressively and it wasn't on purpose. It's just, I felt more comfortable, I guess. But when I did the test like this and did the exact same number of laps on the exact same track, the 4S rig ended up being a lot more efficient than the 6S rig. I don't know where that came from or, or why it worked like that. And then I also did, I attempted to do another test where I did the, the laps of the regional qualifier course, you know, five laps, but I, I ended up crashing on the 6S rig and recovering but still like that's going to use up a lot of ma when you hit something and it you know flips out for a second so that one also the numbers came in saying that the 4s rig was more efficient but in my opinion those numbers are tainted yeah disappointed i wish there would have been a more clear cut winner i also wish i would have brought more chargers and charging to the field because uh, i would have loved to have flown more packs i ended up spending a lot of time kind of waiting for these batteries to charge so i knew how much uh, power i was putting back into them but the first one I did, which I really think was the most consistent and uh, the best for data point, it did show that the 6S rig was 10% more efficient, but I don't know if that's something we can trust and rely on. So one last thing before I let you guys go, I did have some kind of comments about how the rigs flew right on the spot after I'd flown the 6S and the 4S rig. So let's check that out. Going from the 6S build to this one, um, it felt lighter for some reason. And I know for a fact it's not lighter, so I really don't know why that would be, but it, it felt it felt more floaty, I guess. Kind of strange. It didn't seem to carry as much of the corners. I don't I don't know. But uh, obviously the power is not there on the punch out. You could definitely feel it. Uh, the other thing I found kind of interesting is that I haven't tuned the 6S quad. I put my like normal 4S quad tune on it, and uh, uh, I noticed the tune on this felt worse than the tune on that. Like magically, 6S made my tune mo better. So I'm uh, not sure what that's all about. But. All right, so that is it for now. You can definitely expect me to revisit this in this way of testing 6S versus 4S. Right now, I'm going to send you out with a couple of my better laps from today. This is on 4S. This is on my Johnny Cash uh, Black on Black quad. So uh, it was flying really well today. I felt super locked in and uh, had a good time. But guys, thanks for checking this out. If you have any questions, be sure and comment them below. Uh, subscribe. A uh, thumbs up would mean the world to me, so we'll catch you next time on Heart of America FPV.